In this training tutorial, we will continue to enter the reinforced concrete slab bridge from example A7 from the Manual for Bridge Evaluation. In video 2, we will create a superstructure definition, define slab member alternatives, and define bridge alternative. Our superstructure definition is a simple span reinforced concrete slab beam bridge. The slab will be divided into three strips. We will now create a superstructure definition. Double click on the Superstructure Definitions folder. This is a reinforced concrete slab bridge. Hence, we are creating a reinforced concrete slab system superstructure from the new Superstructure Definition window. Click OK to create the superstructure definition. A system superstructure is one in which all of the slab strips are defined relative to each other. In a system superstructure, BRDR will be able to compute the dead and live load distribution to each of the slab strips. Enter the following data to describe our superstructure. There is one span of length, 21.5 feet. There are three slab strips. Select RC as the member alternative type, since a slab is a reinforced concrete member. This also enables the display of the items in the bridge workspace tree that belong to a reinforced concrete member such as bar mark definitions. Click OK to save data to the memory. Also click Save on the ribbon to save the bridge on the database. Now let's collapse some of the bridge workspace folders and expand the Span 1 superstructure definition tree. Open the Load Case Description window and click on the Add Default Load Case Descriptions button to create typical load case descriptions. In the following windows, dead loads will be assigned to these load cases so the analysis engine will know to what stage to apply the dead loads and what factors to use with the dead loads. The next data we enter for our superstructure definition will be the framing plan. Select the Framing Plan Detail node under Span 1 Superstructure Definition, and you will notice that the Schematic button is enabled in the ribbon under the Workspace tab. Click the Schematic button to open the Framing Plan Schematic. The schematic can be moved around and enlarged. At this point of our bridge entry, we have defined the superstructure definitions as containing three slab strips, but we have not specified where they are located relative to each other. Thus, the schematic shows all of the slab strips in the same location, right on top of each other. Open the Framing Plan Detail window and enter a slab strip spacing as shown. Extra care should be taken to enter all data with the same number of decimal points, such that we do not have any rounding discrepancies in our data. Click Apply to save the data to memory and see that the slab strip positions are adjusted in the framing plan schematic. Click OK to close the framing plan detail window. Close the framing plan schematic and dock the schematic viewer as shown. Now select the Structural Typical Section node. The schematic button is available for the structural typical section as well. We have not defined the width of the slab strips or the location of the slab strips with respect to the left edge of the deck. Hence, the schematic does not look correct. Open the structural typical section window and enter the following data to locate the superstructure definition reference line. The superstructure definition reference line is the line along which the span length was entered on the superstructure definition window. This line is used as the baseline to locate the geometry of the superstructure. Click Apply to see how the slab strips, indicated as boxes, are shifted. Click the Apply button as we enter data on each tab to visually verify the structural typical section. Enter the concrete curbs on the generic tab with the following data. Use 
use the Compute button on the Lane Position tab to compute the travel way location. This travel way will be used by BRDR to compute the live load distribution factors. The manual for bridge evaluation allows striped lanes on the structure to be used for live load distribution for bridge ratings. The striped lanes tab allows you to enter the location of the striped lanes. In BRDR, the usage of the striped lanes in the rating is controlled by this checkbox on the superstructure definition window. Our example does not use the striped lanes for rating, so we will leave the striped lanes tab blank. Enter the wearing surface data as shown in the wearing surface tab. Click OK to close the window. If you completely close the schematic by mistake, you can use this schematic button to reopen it. We will close the schematic so it does not distract us while we discuss the following window. The superstructure loads window allows you to describe the temperature loads, wind load, and the method of the dead load distribution. Our example does not require any changes to this data, so we will click Cancel to close this window. Click on the Bar Mark Definitions folder to create a new Bar Mark Definition as shown. This Bar Mark Definition will be used as the slab beam reinforcement. Click OK to close the window and save the data to memory. We will now review the windows for exterior slab strip. Expand the Members node to reveal the slab strips. The Member window displays the computed span lengths of the member based on the location relative to the superstructure definition reference line and takes into account skewed supports, if they exist. Expand the Tree node S1 to reveal the Member Loads window, which allows you to enter additional loads on the member such as utilities, or signs, or pedestrian load. The Supports window allows you to describe the support conditions for the member. Double-click the Member Alternatives folder to create a new member alternative for S1. Select Reinforced Concrete Slab as the member alternative type. Enter the following data for member alternative. Enter the left and right end bearing locations. This example analyzes the full width of the slab strip. Check Edge Beam checkbox to indicate the member alternative should be considered as an edge beam in the LRFD distribution factor computations. The Specs tab allows you to select the Analysis Engine and the Specification Edition to use when analyzing this member. The Factors tab allows you to specify the conditions and system factors for this member. The Control Options tab allows you to specify control options to use in the design review and rating of this member. Click OK to save the data to memory, and click Save on the ribbon to save the data to database. Now we will describe the exterior slab member alternative for member S1. The Default Materials window allows you to set default materials for various components of the slab beam, like slab concrete or slab reinforcement. Open the Strip Profile window to describe the slab strip profile. Enter data for the slab selection, slab depth, and slab reinforcement as shown. For slab selection, the concrete material is already selected from the Defaults Materials window. For slab reinforcement, the bar mark is used for the bar definition defined previously. Also note that the bar starts at 0.25 feet left of the start of the beam, which is within 6 inches of left end bearing distance, entered in the member alternative window. This will allow the bar to be partially developed at the start of the beam. You can also mark the bar as fully developed at the start and at the end. Click OK to save the data to memory. 
Click on the Live Load Distribution node to open the Live Load Distribution window. The Live Load Distribution window allows you to enter the Live Load Distribution factors for this member. Compute buttons are available to compute these values for you. If you leave these values blank, the Ashto analysis engines will compute the live load distribution factors at runtime. We will leave these values blank in this example so that they are computed at runtime. Click Cancel to exit the window. This example does not have any effective supports or hinge locations, hence no data needs to be entered for them. The Points of Interest window allows you to specify additional locations where spec checking is required and allows you to override various capacity details at a location. Locations where spec checks occur are controlled by the Points of Interest Control Options selection on the Member Alternative Control Options tab, as shown here. If you want to add additional locations to be spec checked, create a Points of Interest there and ensure this control option is selected. Now that we have described our beams, click Save on the ribbon to save the data to the database. A strip profile schematic is available if you sit on the name of the member alternatives in the Bridge Workspace tree to help you validate your input. Now we will create a member alternative for an interior slab member, S2, similar to how we created a member alternative for S1. We will enter strip profile, as discussed previously, as shown here. For exterior member S3, it is similar to S1 due to symmetry, hence we will be linked to member S1 as shown here. Click on the Save ribbon to save the data to the database. Now that the superstructure definition has been defined, open the Structural Typical Section schematic to view the Superstructure Typical section. Drag the schematic out of the schematic docking station. View the schematic, and then dock it back in the schematic viewer. Define bridge by double-clicking on the bridge alternative folder as shown. Create a superstructure by double-clicking on the superstructure folder as shown here. Create a superstructure alternative by double-clicking on the superstructure alternative folder and assign the superstructure definition span1 created above to this superstructure alternative. Click OK to close the superstructure alternative window. Click Save on the ribbon to save the bridge model to the database. To understand the concept of alternatives, you can click on the Bridge Workspace tab and open Help Topics, as shown. Under the Index tab, type Bridge Alternative and display this Help Topic. A given bridge can have several unique bridge alternatives. Each bridge alternative must include the entire bridge, but can consist of a different layout of superstructures. The number of spans, the span lengths, and the peer locations are defined within the bridge alternative and its accompanying windows. Entering different bridge alternatives can be useful when comparing various alternatives for a preliminary study. Click on Figure 1, which illustrates concept of alternatives at various levels of defining a bridge model. 